This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Tuesday, the 9th day of January in the year 2024. I'm Gordon Mosley reporting, and here's what we're tracking tonight. The 2024 law year opened this morning with the launch of a strategic plan for the judiciary and announcements by the acting chancellor of the judiciary, Justice Yannick Cummings, that a number of new magisterial positions have been created by the Judicial Service Commission. In her address at the Supreme Court this morning, the acting chancellor said after a six-year hiatus, the Judicial Service Commission was reconstituted in July of last year. And since then, it has been working to address a number of issues, including the appointments of judicial officers. She said the Judicial Service Commission has taken a decision to increase the complement of magistrates in light of the growing demand for justice. So we now welcome the post of Deputy Chief Magistrate for additional positions of principal magistrate, with one principal magistrate being in each district. Georgetown will be having two principal magistrates, four additional positions of senior magistrate, and 10 additional positions of magistrates. Two additional positions of commissioners of title. A number of the new magisterial positions have already been advertised with interviews currently ongoing to fill the positions. According to the acting chancellor, the appointments will be made sooner. Additionally, the Judicial Service Commission has taken a decision to establish a new magisterial district along the east bank of Demerara to complement the eight magisterial districts that have been in existence since 1951. Currently, the east bank of Demerara falls within the Georgetown Magisterial District. It was also announced that magisterial courts are being constructed in Maikoni and Coban John on the east coast of Demerara, as well as in Port Kaitu, Mamadia, and Mabaruma. This year will also see the construction of new magistrate courts in Providence on the east bank of the Marara and Prophet Harmony on the west bank of the Marara. And with the extension of the Court of Appeal, there will be simultaneous hearings of civil and criminal matters at the appellate court through the use of an additional courtroom. Attorney General Anil Nandlal, while offering governments of wavering support to the local judiciary, underscored the need for the appointment of a land court judge at Berbice and for the work of the appellate court to extend beyond the Marara. In Berbice, we have not had a land court judge for close to eight years, and perhaps we should consider appointing a sufficient number that would take care not only of the present burden, but the accrued burden over the years. I respectfully ask the judiciary also to consider the appointment, when it reaches that stage, of a sufficient number of Court of Appeal judges that will allow for simultaneous sittings of the court the Attorney General said there should also be courts of appeal in Berbice and Essequibo now that the Court of Appeals Act has been amended to increase the number of appellate judges. The expansion of the magisterial districts and the creation of additional judicial positions at all levels of the judiciary form a critical part of the judiciary's seven-year strategic plan, which is intended to enhance access to justice, modernize the justice system, and uphold the highest standard of legal excellence. Acting Chief Justice Roxanne George in her address said the local judiciary is committed to the task and will execute its mandate in keeping with the theme of the strategic plan. In this vein, we have started to add to our staff complement skill sets in management and technology in order to improve our service delivery. We have continued to enhance our brick and mortar plant, renovating existing courts, and constructing new technology-ready courthouses, some with living quarters across the length and breadth of Guyana, including in our cherished Cinderella County of Essequibo. As part of the move to transform the judiciary along technological lines, a magistrate's court case management system was launched in December, allowing police officers to file their cases electronically from the police stations to the magisterial district court offices. The judiciary is also working to implement an e-litigation system for the Court of Appeal and the High Court. President of the Guyana Bar Association, Ronald Bert Smith, was among officials present at the ceremony to mark the opening of the law year. 
The January Assizes was also declared open this morning. More news coming up in just a moment. Lord, I just love to shop in this store. My customers, they're gonna love all these things. So many different things in one place. How oh, so like them? Electronics, toys, stationery, confectionery, exercise equipment, shoes and clothes for men, women, and children, school things, costume, jewelry, perfume, makeup. Oh, look the makeup! Giftland <laughs> Office Max, Guyana's favorite department store. your time to win big the massey store's christmas jackpot promotion is back and bigger than before spend five thousand dollars at any massey stores to be the lucky winner of a brand new mgzs and fantastic weekly store prizes from now until january 31st 2024 what are you waiting for head to your nearest massey stores to shop now see our facebook and instagram pages for more details massey stores our family serving your family. It's one of your biggest goals, getting your own home, where memories are made, where happiness lives. You may feel that home ownership or renovation is beyond your reach, but we at Republic want you to know that there's always a way. Ask us about our suite of mortgages. Let's help make your housing wishes come true or advise on how the equity in your existing home can finance other dreams and goals. Call or go online to learn more. Busta! Busta flavor, flavors! We're full of flavor, flavor, flavors! Busta flavors! That my craver! We're full of flavors! Tell your neighbors about the Busta flavor, flavors! Grab a Busta flavor, flavor, flavors! Yeah! Thirst Busta! Grab a Busta! Busta flavor tastes the savor! Busta! Busta flavor, flavors! Busta! Busta flavor, flavors! Twice the fun, twice the thrill. On your next trip with Copa Airlines, stop over in Panama and enjoy two vacations in one at no additional airfare. Because to live life at its fullest, first you have to stop. So next time you fly Copa Airlines, stop over in Panama at no additional airfare. Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, Senior Counsel Anil Nandlal, is not happy with the time it is taking for the election fraud cases to be heard. At a press conference yesterday, the Attorney General questioned some of the decisions of the magistrates who have been hearing the matters, pointing out that in his view, the cases are not being treated with the seriousness he believes they deserve. There has been a hold-up, and that delay is largely attributable to the fact that we have not gotten from the Council of Legal Education's law schools information that we have requested and that are required to do the feasibility study. Mr. Nandlal said when members of the PPP were charged under the previous government, they all had their day in court without any magistrate recusing themselves. He said there is now a wave of magistrates recusing themselves to try the election cases and similar cases. And though he is not suggesting ulterior motives, he said he must be critical. The approval for the law school has essentially been given 
preliminarily. But we have to satisfy certain criteria and participate in a process before that decision is crystallized. And that is the process that we are participating in. According to the Attorney General, the Director of Public Prosecutions, Senior Counsel Shalimar Ali Hack, has written to the Chancellor of the Judiciary, requesting the Chancellor's intervention, explaining that the Chancellor has a supervisory authority over magistrates in the country. I believe the Council has reached the position that there are going to be additional law schools and that one will be located in Guyana. Mr. Nandlal also said an entire electoral cycle is about to be completed and there are still no interventions on the persons charged in relation to cases emanating from the last general elections. A number of former GCOM officials as well as officials from the opposition APNU AFC are facing various charges related to alleged electoral fraud. They have all declared their innocence. The matters have been crawling their way through the local court system for more than three years. More than three weeks after the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions recommended that popular race car driver and businessman Mark Vera face five assault charges, the Ghana Police Force has not proceeded with a court case and is silent on the matter. The investigation and recommended charges stem from an incident between Vera and another man identified as Morris Menendez. The Office of the DPP confirmed a news source that advice was sought by the police on the matter and charges were recommended based on the submitted police file on the investigations. The DPP recommended that Vera face charges of malicious damage to property, abusive language, assault causing actual bodily harm, assault and providing false information to law enforcement. News source has been repeatedly seeking information from the Ghana police force on the status of the case and the reasons behind the reluctance of the police force to proceed with the recommended charges. The head of the police force's corporate communications unit, Mark Ramatar, has been ignoring questions on the matter, despite promising more than a week ago that he would seek information from the acting police commissioner on the issue. There are reports that after the police investigations were completed into the allegations of assault against Vera and the recommendations were received from the DPP, a senior police official requested the entire file on the matter. Since that request, the case has gone cold. The Ghana Police Force has reported that another life has been lost on the country's roadways. 25-year-old motorcyclist Ricardo Bipta lost his life late on Monday night along the number 9 public road on the west coast of Berbice. In a report, the Ghana Police Force stated that the accident took place at around 10.30 last night when a motor car that was being driven in the opposite direction slammed into the young motorcyclist while it was overtaking a truck. The motorcyclist was pitched into the path of a truck and was hit down onto the roadway. He was picked up and rushed to the Fort Wellington Hospital where he was pronounced dead. The drivers for both the truck and the car that hit the motorcyclist have since been arrested and remain in police custody while investigations are ongoing. The police said breathalyzer tests were conducted on both drivers but there was no trace of alcohol in their system. The Ministry of Finance has announced that next Monday, the Minister responsible for Finance, Dr. Ashni Singh, will present this year's national budget. He will announce the government plans and programs for the next year and beyond. It is also expected to see a continuation of several programs which were started last year. In a statement, the Ministry of Finance said this year's budget aligns with the government's manifesto of 2020, which laid the foundation for prosperity for the entire nation. The budget, according to the Ministry of Finance, will be shaped upon two primary pillars, which include the implementation of mechanisms aimed at increasing disposable income into the hands of citizens and the development of Ghana's economic and social infrastructure. Last year, the finance minister presented a whopping $789.1 billion budget in the National Assembly under the theme, Improving Lives Today, Building Prosperity for Tomorrow. The Finance Ministry said last year's budget saw critical development programs for government being fast-tracked and many more expanded to reflect government's continued transformational agenda for the country.
the government returned to the National Assembly three times last year for supplementary budgets. The Ministry of Finance said that the Finance Minister, Dr. Ashni Singh, has been meeting and consulting with various stakeholders over the past several months. Those stakeholders include the private sector to reiterate the government's appreciation of the strong collaboration and the ongoing engagement with the private sector throughout the year. The release said the government met and held consultations also with various stakeholders, including the trade unions, government ministries, and other agencies and civil society. In his New Year's message, President Irfan Ali indicated that the government has set the country on a course of sustained growth and prosperity. And this year, we'll see the government advancing more rapidly along that path. GCOM is currently conducting a claims and objections exercise to produce an official list of electors, OLE, anyone who will be 18 years or over by December 31, 2023, and is a Guyanese citizen by birth, descent, or naturalization, or a citizen from a Commonwealth country living in Guyana for one year or more, is eligible for inclusion in the OLE. GCOM has posted a preliminary list of electors, PLE, at popular locations in all the registration divisions across Guyana for you to check whether your particulars or that of other electors are accurate. You can object to anyone who you believe does not qualify for inclusion in the OLE. To do so, you must be listed in the same divisional list as the person you are objecting to. Visit the GCOM registration office responsible for your area of residence to make an objection. The objections aspect of this exercise will end on Monday, the 22nd of January, 2024. For more information, contact GCOM on 225-0278-9 or visit www.gcom.org.gy. Look at the breathtaking beauty of the Essequibo, from its pristine rivers to its abundant resources. It's a treasure that belongs to Guyana, and we ask Venezuela to respect the rule of international law. commitment to this land is not just about ownership. It's about preserving its beauty and resources for our people and future generations. The controversy between Guyana and Venezuela was settled internationally as full, perfect and final in 1899. Essequibo belongs to Guyana. GCOM is currently conducting a claims and objections exercise to produce an official list of electors OLE. If you will be 18 years or over by December 31st, 2023, and you are a Guyanese citizen by birth, descent, or naturalization, or a citizen from a Commonwealth country living in Guyana for one year or more, you are eligible for inclusion in the OLE. GCOM has posted the preliminary list of electors, PLE, in all of the registration divisions across Guyana for you to check if you are listed 
and if so, whether your particulars are accurate. If you have changed your address since you were registered, you are required to visit the GCOM registration office responsible for your new area of residence to apply for a transfer. Monday, 15 January 2024 is the last day on which you can apply for a transfer. For further information, contact GCOM at 2250278 or visit our website at www.gcom.org.gy. And that early Monday morning accident between a minibus and an SUV outside a Randall police station has claimed the lives of a husband and wife. A police report identified the two dead persons as 51-year-old Sarah Wilson and 54-year-old Ron McKenzie. The husband was the driver of the minibus while his wife was the front seat passenger. She was pronounced dead early yesterday morning while the husband succumbed to his injuries last night. A number of other persons remain hospitalized nursing various injuries. The police report of the accident stated that the minibus that was being driven by Royal McKenzie was heading in a northern direction along the Rhineville Public Road when the driver of the other vehicle lost control of his vehicle. The speeding vehicle slammed into a pile of sand before flipping over several times and slamming into the front of the minibus that was being driven in the opposite direction. The SUV driver has been identified as 29-year-old Priyam Sicharan. He sustained multiple injuries and investigators said he was driving at a fast rate at the time of the accident. The Ghana Fire Service had to be called out to the scene to cut apart the minibus to get the injured persons out. They were all rushed to the Georgetown Hospital where the 51-year-old woman was pronounced dead on arrival and the husband died several hours after. The driver of the SUV that caused the collision remains hospitalized in a critical condition with multiple head injuries. The police said the investigations are ongoing. A young mother and her three children have been left looking for a new home after a fire this afternoon gutted their house in Kiskadi Drive in South Ronville here in Georgetown. The mother who asked that her identity not be disclosed said she was at work when she received a call that her house was on fire just before 3 o'clock this afternoon. The woman said knowing that her three children were at home alone, she rushed home. The three children were found safe. One of them is 15 years old, while the other two who are twins are 6 years old. The fire service responded promptly to the fire and managed to contain the blaze to the one house, saving nearby houses on the left and the right. A cause of the fire is still to be determined, but firemen were seen removing three gas bottles from the house as part of their investigations. The Ghana Fire Service has noted a significant rise in fire reports since the start of the year and has been encouraging persons to be vigilant and to ensure they install fire alarms and smoke detectors in their homes. And the Ghana Fire Service found itself last evening investigating yet another fire in the Sophia area. Late yesterday afternoon, the fire service was summoned to the South Sophia community after an alarm was raised about the house on fire. Despite the best efforts of the firemen, the entire two-story building was completely gutted, leaving millions of dollars in losses. The house was being rented by a couple. The wife, Shannon Dover, said she was not at home at the time of the blaze. She said her husband, who was at home, managed to escape the blaze, but was unable to save anything. I have no clothes, clothes as my sister gave my dress, so I don't have nothing. By the time the fire service got to the house, it was completely engulfed in flames. The blaze was, however, contained to the one building. The woman said her landlord lives abroad. A cause of the fire has not yet been determined. Two men accused of shooting a man dead outside a Canal No. 2 Polder wedding house and injuring another during a course of a robbery were charged and remanded to jail on Monday. 35-year-old Otto Pittman and 49-year-old Oliver Franklin appeared before Magistrate Faith McGusty at the Britain Hoop Magistrate's Court, where they were charged for the murder of Nature and Posada. The two were not required to enter a plea to the indictable murder charge and were remanded to jail. They are also facing attempted murder charges in relation to the shooting of Manny Paul Rambarak. The incident took place on the 31st of December during a wedding celebration. Rambarak was sitting outside the wedding house when the armed men appeared and relieved him of his jewelry. As the robbers were making their escape, Rambarak and the other man, Nature and Passat, chased after them. Gunshots were heard, and Rambarak and Passat were seen falling to the ground. The two injured men were rushed to the hospital, where Passat was pronounced dead, and Rambarak was admitted in a serious condition. 
the two suspects were arrested after being identified by eyewitnesses. They will make their next court appearance on the 7th of February. GCOM is currently conducting a claims and objections exercise to produce an official list of electors OLE. If you will be 18 years or over by December 31, 2023, and you are a Guyanese citizen by birth, descent, or naturalization, or a citizen from a Commonwealth country living in Guyana for one year or more, you are eligible for inclusion in the OLE. GCOM has posted the preliminary list of electors PLE for all registration divisions at popular locations across Guyana for you to check if you are listed and, if so, whether your particulars are accurate. You can make a claim for registration if you are not listed, change correction to your particulars if they are incorrect, or object to the inclusion of anyone who you believe should not be on the list. If you are desirous of making a claim or objection, you must visit the GCOM registration office responsible for your area of residence to do so. The claims aspect of this exercise will end on Monday, the 15th of January, 2020. The objections aspect of this exercise will end on Monday, the 22nd of January, 2024. All GCOM registration offices will be open Mondays to Fridays from 8 hours to 18 hours, Saturdays and Sundays from 10 hours to 14 hours. For further information, contact GCOM at 225-027829 or visit our website at www.gcom.org.gy. Imported frozen meat and food products, fresh produce and pet supplies, freshly made bread. Bread. Rotisserie chicken and patties are also available daily. Shop in comfort today at Food Max and let our courteous staff assist you in satisfying your shopping needs. Food Max, the fresh food specialist. It's one of your biggest goals getting your own home where memories are made, where happiness lives. You may feel that home ownership or renovation is beyond your reach. But we at Republic want you to know that there's always a way. Ask us about our suite of mortgages. Let's help make your housing wishes come true. Or advise on how the equity in your existing home can finance other dreams and goals. Call or go online to learn more. Look who's in the mix now. The new bus, the soda water, zero calories, zero sugar, zero artificial flavors, 100% refreshing. Taste Bust the Soda Water today. Bust the Soda Water, now available for only $120. With your regional and international news tonight, I'm Swetlana Marshall in the region. A group of armed men have broken into a live television studio in Ecuador and threatened staff. Footage shows. According to the BBC, a live broadcast by station TC in the city of Guayaquil was interrupted on Tuesday by the group, who are wearing hoods and carrying guns. Staff were forced to lay on the ground before the live feed cut out. A six-day state of emergency began in Ecuador on Monday after a convicted gang leader vanished from his prison cell. The hooded men were seen leaving the TC studios, with the police seen entering the set about 30 minutes after the gunmen first appeared. National police units have been deployed to the scene. The country's National Police Force said in an update on X, formerly Twitter, that staff had been evacuated from the studio. It later said several suspects had been arrested. The Finance Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Camilo Gonzalez, Monday night announced a series of new taxes as he presented the 1.6 billion EC dollar budget to the Parliament on Monday night. Gonzalez said that from May this year, citizens will begin paying an estimated 25% increase for their drivers and motor vehicle licenses and similar increased charges for related services, while conductor licenses will move from 15 EC dollars to 100 EC dollars. He said also that the fees for the inspection of electrical wiring in domestic and commercial buildings will be doubled or more than tripled depending on the type of building and the number of points, while fees have been introduced for wiremen. Further, travelers to and from the country will pay at least 37.5% more in the airport service charge, which will move from US 4 
40 dollars to 55 us dollars according to the fiscal measures the government is hoping will generate some 6.7 million ec dollars more in revenue this year and finally tonight international news the year 2023 has been confirmed as the warmest on record driven by human caused climate change and boosted by the natural el nino weather event last year was about 1.48 celsius warmer than the long-term average before humans started burning large amounts of fossil fuels the eu's climate service says almost every day since july has seen a new global air temperature high for the time of the year bbc analysis shows sea surface temperatures have also smashed previous highs the met office reported last week that the uk experienced its second warmest year on record in 2023 these global records are bringing the world closer to breaching key international climate targets and that's your news source evening bulletin for tonight. I'm Svetlana Marshall reporting and encouraging you to stay safe.